Some of you know that I've been out in the Karoo, the dark heart of Africa, photographing wildflowers, wildlife, landscapes, and nightscapes. Now, for those who don't know, a nightscape is exactly the same as a landscape, but with a major component of night sky involved. And the difficulty with nightscapes are the same as for landscapes, with a twist. The problem we have is a really low signal to noise ratio and a sky stars moving in each shot. So in order to combat that low signal to noise ratio, I like to use a technique known as noise averaging, which is a fancy name for stacking identical shots, one on top of the other, four, eight, six, 12 deep in Photoshop and emphasizing those bright points of information and de-emphasizing those dark, noisy areas. And the other advantage of stacking like that is we can reduce the ISO, we can turn it down, we can take a darker image than we would normally in one shot, reduce the uh, exposure duration, take a darker image, a shorter image with less, with less star trailing in each individual shot. The difficulty of the process is putting it all together afterwards. But luckily for us, there's a few pieces of software with, which help with that. If you're using a Mac, you can buy a piece of software called Starry Landscape Stacker. If you're using a PC like I am in this exercise, you can use a free piece of software, a really good piece of software called Sequitor. And I'm gonna show you how to stack these images now. Let's see if I can keep this short and dirty instead of long and boring. You can see here that I'm in Lightroom and I've got eight files selected. Seven are pictures and one is a dark frame. A dark frame is nothing more than an image taken with the lens cap on. And the purpose of it is to reduce noise from heat in the sensor. You take it with exactly the same settings and importantly, at the same time as the other images. And you can usually take four or five of these images to include in a project like this. In this case, I only have one. So I exported these files earlier as 16-bit TIFF files, so retaining full detail and at the right size, the same size as they are now. Importantly, with no noise reduction or sharpening whatsoever, they're just as they were intended, straight TIFF files, which I'm going to open in Sequitor. I open them by double-clicking star images at the top left, navigating to the folder that these images are included in. Note that I exclude the last one. That's the dark frame. I'm going to open the star images. It's selected automatically a base image. A base image is a point in time that the other images are going to be aligned around. Remember, the stars are moving. So it usually selects the middle images. This is the best one or the easiest one to align the rest around. Then I need to choose a noise image or a dark image here. I can double click it, choose the dark frame, and then finally assign an output. And I'm gonna call this one rather originally, I thought trees and stars. So once that's done, I'm ready to start making some adjustments. If I look in the lower bottom panel here, we have a composition align stars mode. I need to change that in this case to freeze ground because I need to mask out the ground and allow the sky to swing and be aligned. This checkbox here, selective, uh, is something that you'd use to remove short-term artifacts, airplanes going across, meteors, uh, people moving around in the frame. Now I happen to be in one of the darkest places in the on the planet and I don't have any aeroplanes flying overhead or any of that stuff. So I don't need to check it in this instance. But if you're photographing in the more developed world and in the northern hemisphere, then by all means, keep selective on. Right. The next thing I need to do is where it's indicated as red here, sky region, full area. I need to select the sky so that Sequitor knows where the ground is and knows which part of the image to align. So if I click it and uh, move my mouse, into the, uh, the sky, I can highlight the sky region with a rather nice snazzy shade of green. I can increase the size of my cursor, my brush, using the scroll button on a mouse. 
and I'm just going to do a very rough selection around these trees uh, so that we can so that I can show you how this works. Now to deselect, I need to right click with the mouse button to select. I click with the left selection. So I'm going to just roughly draw around the leaves on these trees so that they're deselected and eliminated from the mask. Just make sure that I've got all of the leaves in areas that won't be aligned later on. Right, I think that's pretty much good enough. The next thing I need to do is just go to the reduce distortion effects and make sure it's on complex here. Complex means wide angle. And that's important so that we can get nice sharp stars in the corners of the image. The rest of it, we don't actually need to do anything with. Basically, we can press the start button and see what this thing is gonna generate. It's usually pretty quick, certainly a lot quicker than I could do myself in Photoshop, manually aligning uh, these images around the stars. And what I really like about it is the masking doesn't seem to need to be that precise to achieve good results. So here we are, 20 seconds later, and we've got a finished image. If I hit close, it's gonna open up that TIFF file, and there we go. It's got beautifully sharp stars, in the corners, nicely aligned. And I'm gonna take this saved image into Lightroom. To do that, I just come back into uh, my Lightroom catalog, synchronize the folder that I saved the images in. And just uncheck them all except for the finished sequitur image and bring it into Lightroom. Let's see what we've got. I want to compare this image to one of the originals. So let me get it open next to another picture taken at the same settings. So if I compare these, I've got the sequitur image on the right and the un modified image on the left and I can see immediately I uh, hopefully you can even though there's obviously going to be some video compression that the image on the right is incredibly clean it's really really nice there's no noise in the background here the stars are still sharp they've retained their color which I really like I really like the way that uh, this method allows you to retain the myriad colors of the stars they're not just white lights they're yellows and blues and greens and uh, turquoises and then the detail in the foreground in the rocks is absolutely much better it's much better there's a crunchiness to the image on the left and uh, the detail but no crunchiness in the image on the right it's, it's really got a nice crispness that you don't get with uh, software noise reduction so all in all i think that's done a really good job it's been really quick a few minutes work and a lot quicker than what I was used to when using Photoshop in the past. Thumbs up, sequitur.